Was Jared the outstage? Again, it's either Jared or Drake. It's it's uh oh, Drake does it too. Drake does it too. Yeah, it's funny. Um, yeah, it's uh it's like if I was like a detective, like okay, uh, okay, so clearly Jared was here. So he's figured out. Ah, ah, that's so awkward. What I do? Like, my legs are just all. So do you? Now you have to do like. <laughs> over the top. Yeah. Or put Nothing your about it, it works. <laughs> put your legs over put the top. Your, put your leg over the top. Yep. Yes. 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 And and when you do this, sitting like that. Just like that? Yes. Why? Yes. <laughs> like a pretzel. Just one. Just, Just one. one. <laughs> Great. 
let's do dinner, let's hang out, you know. And there was a lot of that, which is always the best part, is hanging out together. Um, but every time I get to seven, go knock on Jensen's trailer and just hang out in his room and play guitar. Um, so that part of it was always great. Um, but yeah, it was, a, but yeah, personally it was a shock. I'm still coming to terms with it. But it was, it was a great, it was just a great part to, to be able to play it too. Thank you. Thanks. very much. Thank you. Is it Father's Day here too? No, it's on March 19th. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And I don't have a question so much as a thought. Okay. <laughs> but when you came back in, in season 11 as Chuck, the, your performance fairly, fairly well when you sang that. I think that was one of the best performances I've ever seen. Oh, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's so nice of you to say, and you know, honestly, that feels really good to hear because, like, I it meant a lot to me too. Like that moment was a really special moment, and like sometimes when you you act in things and you, you do things, and then you see the finished product later, and you're like, oh, they didn't really capture what it felt like. This was exactly how it felt, and the way that they edited it together. It, kind of gave you goosebumps, like that was the, what it felt like in the moment. It was a very like, it's in all the years acting, I've never been in another situation like that, where like, uh, everybody stopped what they were doing and everyone's watching me, I'm on a stage like this, I'm playing the song, there were like three cameras where I went going, and we did it all in one take. And the audio you hear is the audio I played on the day, so it was, it was, it was a really special moment. And you know, I always feel like a scene has gone well when like a random crew member grip or somebody, you know, someone from the electric department was like, hey man, that was really, that was great. Like, yes, the grip slights me, you know. Uh, so anyway, so it, it felt that special, so I'm really gra I'm glad that it, it came out that way. Thank you.
convention in particular is very international, and I really like that. But um, yeah, that, that, that's it. That's it. It's just the, the, the travel can be wearing. But besides that, it's awesome. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oui, merci. And I was like, oh, 
that's what that, that's what that is. So I didn't know, but okay. And um, and he was like, yeah. And the bad news is, I can't really bring you back again. Like I think this is it. He didn't know the show was going to go on for ten more seasons. So um, I was like, oh, this is actually really bummer news. Um, <laughs> so after I sat down, I cried a little bit, um, and then. Um, yeah, so that was it, and uh, I didn't think I'd see the show again. And then I started doing conventions, and he was like, "Don't, don't tell people you're God. Let them have their own theory about it." So that was kind of all I knew was that I was God. I couldn't really say it. I give hints like, well, "I think maybe that's a good theory." Um, and then, uh, yeah, then it was on for so long that it finally made sense to bring, bring me back, especially with Amara, my sister, and have that whole battle. Um, so yeah, so, and then when I came on season 10, you know, Robbie Thompson wrote that episode, I was just talking about him in the meet and greet. He, Robbie was a great writer for the show because he was a fan of the show. So he wrote Baby, he wrote fan fiction, he wrote Don't Call Me Shirley, he wrote the episodes that really had, they were an episode that a fan would write, a fan would write for the show, right? He, I think he was like one of the best writers. And um, so he had the idea to bring me back as sort of a wink to the, to the audience who maybe suspected I might be God. No, I kind of find it all, found it all out as you found it out. The only kind of hint I had is that I was God, and that's how Eric meant me to be. But I didn't know how they'd use me when they brought me back. And, and it all made sense, you know? I was just always thrilled with whatever they called. And like I said, I never, ever imagined it would make the turn, but ultimately I'd be the ultimate bad guy to try to bring the show down, you know? Um, but yeah, so that's all I knew, and I kind of just went with that, you know? And it was always the, the good exercise for me to figure out how to make it still Chuck through the whole thing, right? Even like Chuck as the writer, as the prophet, as God, as absentee father, as really shitty father, <laughs> and then ultimately not God at all. But so just being on that journey and trying to create a through line was a, a good challenge for me. But, so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
So we just talked about Perfon 8 next year. Uh, but maybe, yeah, so, so maybe I didn't catch it, but do you think you're going to be there? I don't know. I haven't been invited yet, but I would certainly love to be. I mean, I had such a great time this year, and that was such a, a, a cool little solo show that I got to play, play there. It was so cool. It was really fun, and I, 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 like, I never expected it was going to be like that, you know? It was really wild, you guys. It was like, like I came on stage with this solo show, and someone had said it was going to be more like a meet and greet. So I thought it was going to be like 10 people in the room. I come on stage, and it's like packed. I felt like it was like 500 people in this room, it was crazy. And most of them had never heard my music before. So that's another sort of like, oh, whoa, you know? And I'm so used to like, I'm, I'm amazing when I sing this song, Amazing, and everyone says, um, So captivating. What is that? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> and uh, so I, I'm sorry, I stopped at that part, and nobody said anything. <laughs> uh, and I go, right, okay, so I had to stop the song, right, so okay, so this part of the song, you, guys, you say this back to me, and so, but that was great. So yeah, I would love to come again. Yeah. So we loved having you, and we love to see you again. Okay? Thank you. Tell that to Marianne, and then maybe she'll invite me, and that'd be cool. You will. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. I'll, I'll be there, man. I'll be there. I have, I have a great time there, too. Hi. Hi. About you and Jensen that you can share? About me and Jensen. Well, gosh, I do have lots of stories. Um, the first one that comes to mind is one time we were in Australia at a convention, and our convention was right near this like casino mall kind of thing in Sydney, Melbourne, Sydney, Sydney maybe, Sydney. And anyway, we're going through this. this we have we had a couple hours on. I do like birds. I never said it. He made that up. I'm sure when I go, I'm gonna love it because I love everything. You just told me. I just told the woman I go into a bubble with her. I didn't even know where. I said, take me. She said, the little people and big people and juice. And I said, okay, I'm in. I love birds. Richard Spence and Trick Face. Anyway, so, so, Jensen, so Jensen and I are walking through this mall, and we're talking, he's talking about watches. Him and Jared have watches, they're watch guys. They have watches, cologne, they're, 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 they're cool dudes that way. Like, I'm not. So he's like, you, you, have a, you have a Rolex? And I was like, no oh, man, I, I've got like a Casio. I don't have, you know. And he was like, oh, I'm going to get you a watch. And I was like, just that was just gonna buy me a Rolex. This is insane. Come like, on, we went into the Rolex store at this really it's kind of high class mall. <sighs> get a Rolex, we're really gonna watch this. They're saying all these things like this one you can do underwater to 3,000 feet, this one you can go up in the air, this one never breaks, this one. And I'm going, okay, I don't know, does it have a calculator on it? I, I don't know, I, I have no idea what I'm doing here. And, and so, um, start putting them on me and you know, he's, he's really directing the whole thing. He's like, come on, try that one on. <laughs> this is just so amazing. He's going to buy me this watch. So they finally, we got one. He's like, that's, no, that's a pretty watch. It's, it's this one I'm wearing right now, which I never wear. But Richard said, like, you never wear that watch, so I, I'm wearing it. And and I, I put, like, a leather band on it, so it's less Rolexy. <laughs> <laughs> so they put it on. It's got the, like, silver band. It's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous watch. And I was like, uh, I, I have to say, I really I do like this one. And Jensen's like, all right, let's get it. I'm like, cool, great. And so they're like, okay, so that's um, $10,000. And I was like, huh. And Jensen's looking at me, and I'm like, oh, oh so I'm, uh, right, right, right. Cool, 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 yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's me, I'm watching, I'm paying for this. Um, yeah, right, because when he said, let's get you watch, he's been like, we together are going to buy you watch with your money. Right, right, right. Um, so already, I'm, I'm paying more than I'm getting paid to even be at the convention, so I... Like, it's fine, it's fine. Um, he sneezes $10,000, you know what I mean? I'm, so, I paid for the watch, uh, which was the beginning of the end of my marriage, but... <laughs> 
went in and I got the Rolex and a great story out of it. But when you buy a Rolex at a Rolex store, they give you champagne. You know, they have to take a picture of champagne. So there's a picture that Richard says <laughs> looks like a proof of life video. <laughs> Where it's me and Jensen with our with our um, champagne and the watch on, and the look on my face is like <laughs> sweat. I got this picture; it's amazing. And Jensen's like watches, and I'm like, fuck me. Yeah, so I go put it on with a pair of pants, because that's all I was looking for is pants. 
and I come out with the sweater and the pants on. And she wasn't wrong. I mean, it was, it was good. It was fine. It was good. In the lighting of the store. Sure. <laughs> in their mirrors standing next to her standing next to her <laughs> while she was telling you how good it looked she said it looked hot it it, it would look real good i never looked good. at the, i didn't even look at the price tag i was like you just you looked at your reflection in her eyes yeah yes. exactly wow yeah i think something's going on here i, I think like, i thought there was an energy you know everybody thinking about the sweater and Cut. so <laughs> and he was like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'll take it, I'll take it. She was like, great. So he goes, you know, takes it off the dressing room, takes it up to the thing. I'll let you take it from here. Put it down, and then she's like, okay, so that's uh, $1,200 for the sweater. And I was like, for that, just for the one? I'll take one, that's $1,200, 1200 Jesus Christ. Uh, but in my mind, but it, I was like, yeah. But on the outside, he was like, Cool. All good. Well, we're not a That's what I came for. <laughs> Meanwhile, this isn't even a convention. How much did this I make this week? Around $1,200. Yeah. This person. isn't a convention either. Yeah. This is a, this is a tour where some shows we're paying. Yeah. Like, we're, they're, it's costing us money. We're like four play. guys sleeping in the same bed because that's all we can afford, right? So, uh, and then we get back to our, our Airbnb and um, I'm freaking out. And the whole walk back. Well, hold on. How, how much were the pants as well? The pants were like maybe six hundred dollars. So you're like two grand, just about two, two grand. Yeah. Uh -huh. The pants, you know, were expensive too. But I thought, well, I really wanted these pants. Anyway, so then I get back to the thing, and we have a talk. We're like, let's go return it, man. Let's take it back. Yeah, it's fine. You tail between your legs a little bit, but like, take it back. I was like. But I'll, I'll take it back. At this point, I probably needed to eat and hydrate. I was not in good shape. I was, I was just upset. And also, she loves you for who you are, not what you spend. Exactly. <laughs> that's what I thought. Again, you know what I mean? That relationship's built on rock solid foundation. I think I also was like, you were in a van, we're playing a show tonight if you want to come see us. I was a real, like, cool guy. Oh, I know, I've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen that you. So then I go back outside, it starts raining. Just over me, I think. And, uh, <laughs> it was the next. It was the next day, wasn't it? No, that day. That day. That fucking day. Because we're out of the ground. It's raining. You come with me. I'm like a drowned rat. We go back to the store, Soho. I go in. I'm smoking wet. I'm getting her attention. I was like, listen. Uh, um, I don't think I'm gonna wear this sweater. I'm um, gonna be honest, but um, it's great. You're great. This whole store is great. We're great. <laughs> you and I are still fine. Right? Yeah, this is show and I, and a reflection of. But I'm just gonna need to return the return the sweater. Just like there's no returns. <laughs> we don't do returns. Can you give me a store credit? I was like, no, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. I, 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 it's fine. I, 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 I love I love the I love the sweater. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so yeah, so um, I've worn that sweater twice. Um, I don't think I've ever seen the sweater. No, no, you don't. I see Rob a lot. <laughs> oh, man, I got suckered. It's probably because the one or two times you did wear it, we may or may not have walked in front of you ten paces and said, I swear I'm not just swear. Yeah. <laughs> The other thing is interesting about Rob and sales. I'm saying this for you vendors who own stores. When you get Rob in there, this is the move. Um, don't tell him the price. Show him the most expensive item. Because once he crosses the threshold of starting to put it down, he now feels emotionally committed. And so he can't back out. Because there's the other story, which was one time Robbie and I were hanging out in the office we rented before COVID. And Robbie was like, oh, I forgot a belt. I need a belt. Oh, yeah. I, got, yeah. I got a belt, no belt. Um, oh, you know what? I mean, we, we both live in the same neighborhood as the store in our office, but he's like, I'm just gonna go next door. It's like a mercantile kind of place. I'm gonna just go there, see if they have a belt. So he goes, sure, go, go. He goes, two minutes later, he comes back again. I fucked up, Rich! <laughs> what happened? What did you do? What did you do? Hold up the store? No, I bought a belt. Well, wasn't that the goal? Yeah, the $300 belt, Rich, I didn't even put the $300 on the belt. Why did you do it? Yeah, I had it in my hand, I went to the front. I told me how much it was, I didn't want to back out 
then, I'm like, well, that's when you back out, when you don't want to spend the money. Typically, when you don't want to spend the money, that's when you don't spend the money. I get embarrassed. I get embarrassed. It's like I'm already up at the register. I'm not going to be like, oh, never mind. Like, for the belt, 300. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, um, you know. That's uh, just an on sale. Oh, it's so cheap. <laughs> I'll take two. Yeah. You know what? But now, like, when I go into a store and, and, and they're like, can I help you? I'm like, nope, I'm good. She's like, don't make eye contact. Like, don't get help. Like, oh, good. Just looking, just looking. Oh, yeah. Remember the key? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just to go. Tell the key story. We were in a shop that we like to go to here in Rome, and they're just every they they they, go, they, they were on to me. So they're like, these pants look good, this shirt looks good. How about this jacket? Do you need a pair of shoes? And I'm going, okay, I'll take it. Okay, okay. And then the last thing they sold me was this this necklace, which I wear I do wear a lot when I play shows. A necklace with a key on on the end of it. And Rich was like, they literally are in the back going, he's buying everything. Right? I got that key, that key, right? Uh, that chick, put the key in the chick. Got it, great. Uh, that's 300 euros. Yeah. <laughs> and meanwhile, they're like, just that, give me the key. Key to my house. I don't care. <laughs> he's buying everything. <laughs> you get a new house with this guy shopping here. <laughs> give me the key. Give me that rubber band. Uh, I just braced it. That's true. Oh man. And then, uh, was that the year you didn't get the tax rebate because you had all the stuff packed? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, God. That was the year that we went to get. You know, you buy stuff here and they give you back the taxes if you go get it stamped. So, Jason, we all three go to the tax place in the airport and they're like, Do you know, it's got to pay it. Oh, yeah. Uh, can we get Oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I think so? He's like, that's it. I checked it. It's in a bag. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> what? He literally had more stuff than anybody. He had, you're talking about a rebate that would have tilted the scales of your financial year to get back. He had a ton of stuff. I checked it in my bag. So I didn't have it on me. I wasn't wearing it. You could prove. That he had the stuff. So I, I just, I love that Richard's addendum onto the story was like, in case this panel has not been traumatic enough, right? <laughs> I would just like to also remind you. I actually enjoy that he can tell the story now and use actual Italian words. <laughs> right? I'm getting better. Okay, let's have a question and get it off. Oh, right. I, I forgot we were doing a panel. My financial panel. Yeah. This is what we do in the green room. This is exactly the green room. All right. I love to watch uh, the YouTube videos of the U.S. Uh, conventions, and I wondered, uh, can you um, do some new songs or different songs when you're doing the intro songs? <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, well, there's a note from you in the band. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. I didn't know we were doing those. Um, uh, yeah, so... Right, in case yeah. the traumatic stories weren't enough. <laughs> I want you on the YouTube and uh, I don't like so much. Little stale. I want to. I don't know how you say your act. He's uh, tired. Don't me, don't me. Make you sleepy. Uh, yeah, we can look at these songs. We can look at these songs. Yeah, we need for introing the people. Would it kill you to freshen the act? Who do I have to bang to get you to do something different? Because you're killing me. Morto! Morto! <laughs> yeah, no, we definitely need to do that. Do you want to thank her for the question? <laughs> <laughs> Is YouTube here called Tutu? Uh huh. Uh, Here's a question for you. Yeah. If you think that was boring, and apparently you did, you should watch uh, our work in Chicago when Ron wasn't there. Because the band and I, for every single yep. person, they Very came awesome. on and off. We played the same song. <laughs> They're booing you already. They're booing you already. And that song was. Don't. <laughs>
He's flattered. He likes it already. Right. It's already better. You're just like, well, it's new. Finally. Uh, you're, you're gonna, you, you, you'll really go back to appreciating Rob if you watch a full day of that. We're getting complaints in the time. Yeah, no, you're actually, yeah, a lot of it's just, just laziness, but we, <laughs> we need to look at some of them again. It's, you know, it's always tricky to pick a song that fits the person that maybe has a little link, link to the character. I mean, there are some that I think are just classics. I mean, playing Mr. Crowley for Mark Shepard will never change. Oh, right. and I think, I really think he's our angel for, for me, she's pretty pretty. Um, okay. You got a new, uh, the, 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 what do you play for Mark called Greeno? It's, uh, uh, it's either, either, um, uh, Running with the Devil. Yeah, that's a clock. You yeah. got I, I would, I would say this. It helps to think of it like the beginning of Supernatural, each episode, it's the same theme song. Well, it changes so the each theme. character has their own meaning song. So the key of... Last time I tried to help Rob. No, 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 my favorite theme song. That's pretty good. <laughs> this is my favorite line of questioning, and just so you know, when we go back to the green room and tell this story, it's going to get much bigger, much longer, <laughs> much harsher. I have a question. Are there no other drummers in America? Are you, do you have to use Steve? He's a fine with four, four times, but when you do three, four times, I'm like, what clock is he listening to? Like, I just want to reach to the screen and go, da, 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 you're kidding me. And don't play a waltz. Lord, no. If, if, any, if anyone in line has questions like hers, please come to the front. Yeah, <laughs> They all do. They know what you're going to do, they all do. It's, uh, like, it's like an airplane, someone's got a bat. <laughs> Thank you for your question. And it, I, I, I say that a lot, but I genuinely mean thank you for your question so much. It's going to be a good day. We'll do that with the preamble. We'll be like, I love the YouTube video. I've seen it all the other. But with the band. Yeah, yeah. Well, but could you clock in once in your life? How about this calendar year? You, oh, I don't know, what's the phrase? Give a shit? <laughs> Get back at the two of you. Yeah! Yes. Right, here we Excellent. go. Okay. Here we go, Robbie. Revenge is a dish. <laughs> this guy's serve cold. So tall and handsome. Yeah. Wears, wears a jacket, pretty great. Uh -huh. <laughs> His Gucci shoes looking all sweet. <laughs> mm. So great. He's got a brother backstage who's like equally kind and nice and funny. And then over here, looks just like me, but a little better looking. <laughs> a little bit funnier. <laughs> that guy. Boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> now, my, 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 my favorite, my, I do like playing this character. Um, it gets old sometimes, but I, I do, I like, but you know, I my own singers, I do with you oh, guys. Man. I'm a little passive, passive aggressive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> angry little, you know, things like, you know, fuck you guys. Yeah, that's, that's a classic favorite one. Uh, but uh, you listen to all the hits like "fuck you guys." So how was last night? <laughs> Must be nice. I guess my phone wasn't working. <laughs> the email didn't go through. <laughs> you know what? No, Wait, I don't think this. I don't think this is the right answer to the question. <laughs> I don't think that is. I'll just sit over here. I, I I'm trying to think. If there's an actual thing I can like. What's a, what's a story that makes you guys look like assholes? I can't even think. Um, well, while you think about that, I'm yeah. going to help them really quick because they asked me to do... Oh, oh we have an announcement. Okay. Jason Mans has an official announcement. Three of them, in fact. Three official announcements. It's the Jason Mans announcement. Number one. 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 <laughs> uno. Uno. <laughs> the winner of the Gym 13 contest, please go to reception to get your special gift. Number two, do it, do it, do it, do it. Pre-orders for April 2020.
24 gym are now open. If you leave a deposit at the reception desk for your spot next year, you get one day priority when the booking's open. Oh. A oh. little incentive, a little incentive. And number three. Tracy, Tracy, I love that. Tracy, Tracy, Tracy. I was just about to compliment the bilingual echo. Thank you so much. Uh, last but not least, uh, we got a concert tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be really fun. Um, it's the debut of a new band. I don't, I think it's not intentional. It didn't, it wasn't. Uh, it's the Norobs. Yeah. It's the Norobs. <laughs> The concert starts at five tomorrow. I mean, it's a classic too. Five o'clock. Concert tomorrow. Go tomorrow. It's gonna be, gonna be awesome. Everybody's gonna be talking about it forever. Um, I backstage. We were I'm talking too good. Uh, backstage, I was like, um, <laughs> it's gonna be great. Best show ever. You're gonna call him No Rob. And then Jens was like, I like that actually. Comes out and says, No Rob, talking your band. Already they've got a hit at number one. Like I don't even know. It was a joke I made, and it it came back like. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no Oz. But I just helped you out by now saying the band's called the Nor Oz. It's Nor Oz, yeah. <laughs> but we made that joke in the Green Room too, where people kept mispronouncing it. Oh. Jensen was always like, no, no, it's the No Rob. <laughs> As in Nor Rob <laughs> Benedict. Is your band called the Noro Bees? No, no, no. My daughter's the gonna be like, this is new band. They're playing all over TikTok. They're called. No Rob's. I'm like, yeah, that's actually named after me. No, it's not, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> if you were called No Rob, you'd be in it. <laughs> By the way, did you ever ask the question? You're, was that the... She you wanted know? me to tell like a joke that made put you guys under the bus. Uh, gotcha, gotcha. And for the life of me, I can't figure it because I'm a good person. <laughs> thank you. Not a bad bone in your body. Yeah, thank you for your help. Not a bad bone. Well, guys, that's our panel. More later. You've been lovely.
until yesterday when Ruth got it and won. So now, they're the only two out of our group who, who got it and won. So if we're using that measuring stick to see who's doing best at Wordle, right now it's Jensen and Ruth are our top tiers because they both are tied for one each and getting it at one. So there you go. Do you play? Yes, I do. It's a fun game, right? Yeah, it is. It's tricky because sometimes I have, I guess the word right, but I have to look at that word mean. Yes, yeah, so I, I have a dumb question here, but is it always in English or is word all in different languages? You can do it in German as well, but I play it in English. Okay. Is it, is it in Italian? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say if it was just in English, it would be tough for people. That's cool. It's, a, it's such a fun, clever game. Really, really good idea. So, you know, Dave Wordle or whoever came up with it, kudos. Um, thank you for your question. Good luck with your Wordle. Have you played today? Uh, yes, I did already. Don't say it. <laughs> Don't ruin it for everybody. All right, you. Hi. Um, I'm going back in time. Oh, congratulations. That's cool. <laughs> how, are you, how, how are you, uh, what are you, how are you doing that? Uh, I just know. Oh wow, man! That's, yeah. You could really, you could really monetize that, and make a lot of money. Yeah, but I won't. <laughs> That's not smart, but all right. I'm telling you, science will smile upon you. All right, what's up? Okay, uh, I want to ask you a question about Band of Brothers. Okay. Because uh, Battle of the Bulge episode is one of my favorite episodes of all time. So I was wondering whether you have like memories and what was it like to feel that. Oh man, yeah. Uh, I mean, so Band of Brothers was an amazing experience across the board. I'm still really good friends with the majority of the other actors. Um, we have a barbecue every year at, at Bull Bull's house um, to start. We missed during COVID, but other than COVID, we've had it every year around the time when we started boot camp in April. And we have a barbecue, we get together. So in terms of the actual, people know what Band of Brothers is, it's a World War II miniseries that I did many years ago. And it, it is a really cool uh, series, really well done. Um, if you are interested in history or war or any of those things, it's a really honest uh, retelling of, of true stories of, of World War II. Um, the Battle of the Ball sequence was super cool. For starters, the majority of that was inside, which is, you wouldn't think. They took an airplane hangar, and they filled it full of dirt, six feet of dirt, and then dug foxholes in there, and the trees were went up into the, you know, as high as they could in the airplane hangar, and they were, uh, that's where they did the explosions and control everything. We still did some, you know, when you see tanks rolling and stuff, that's outside. We did some outside stuff, too. Um, but. It was largely inside. All the dialogue and all that stuff, and the snow blowing and all that was all done inside, which even when I see it now, it's very impressive. It's really, really cool. Um, there's, here's a piece of trivia. It's episode six, and it's the scene where we're driving into Battle of the Bulge. We're, we're all the back of the deuce and a half headed into the headed to Battle of the Bulge, right? And I think it's episode six, or maybe it's five. Um, and it's the scene where we're all sitting around, and I say, did you bring extra socks, feet, hands, and extra ball? And you, know, you know the scene I'm talking about? Yeah. Extra socks, you gotta bring your socks. Um, I wrote that scene. Yep, I wrote one scene of Band of Brothers. I wrote that scene, and it was a, it was a scene, very interesting scenario how that came about. Tom Hanks, was directing an episode, and he called me and two other actors up to him when we were out in the field. And he said, I'm doing a scene the next couple of days. It's not in the script yet. Um, it needs these characters in it. And he had it written down on a buck slip. It needs these characters in it. Why don't you guys take a crack at it and see if you can put it together. I'm like, okay. And the other two guys are like, when we left, they're like, I don't write, really. And I go, well, I do, so I'll do it. And I went home and spent the next 48 hours like stressing and writing. I was super nervous because I got to turn this into Tom Hanks. So I wrote this scene and turned it into him, and he 
I turned it to him through his assistant, and he said, it's great. Well, you know, we'll do it. Tell the other guys. I'm like, well, I think you should probably issue, you know, put them out as page changes, because otherwise it'll seem unofficial if I tell them. He's like, you're right. So he rewrote, I mean, they, they typed it up officially and put them out as, as official pages for Band Brothers. And uh, he took out one or two lines, but otherwise, that's the scene we shot. So that's, uh, that's that. And then the other, another, band, another trivia thing. You know that scene in, it's in episode six, the, the one that focuses on the medic, on Doc Rowe? Yeah. Yeah? There's a, a scene where he walks past, he's just going somewhere, and behind him, we're in mass, we're all kneeling down in the snow, and, and the priest is burning a mass, and then Muck, Muck stands up and says, now if we die, we die in a city of grace, he says something like that, and then, you know, Doc goes on. That was not in the script either. We were having dinner with Babe Heffron, the real Babe Heffron, and Bill Garnier, the real guys. They were the real soldiers were out in, uh, in London visiting us. And he told that story about Muck insisting that they do a mass and kneel down in the snow and do this mass, and that that's what Muck said afterwards. And so the director, I told that story to the director, the director's like, oh, we'll just, we'll just put that in. So it's not in the script anywhere. We just staged it with the, you know, the director helped stage it so that we could do something that really happened as part of the show. Um, and that show had a lot of that in it. Like, there, there would be moments where the, uh, me sitting in the foxhole talking about swimming the Niagara River is not in the script. That was a letter written to me from, my, from Buck's sister when I was getting information for her. She wrote this story to me. She's like, this is what happened. And she sent me this thing. And I showed it to the director, David Frankel, and he's like, we'll just do that. We'll just, you just tell that story. We'll just line, put you in a foxhole, and you tell the story as written. And so that's just me retelling what was written as a letter to me. And it's all true. Faye, I refer to this woman, Faye Tanner, really was Skip Muck's girlfriend at the time. And in fact, saw the series when it came out, and she contacted the family and sent them Skip's original jump wings because he had mailed it. All his medals were blown up with him, but she's, he had mailed his jump wings home to her when he got them, and then she sent them back to his family once the series came out. And there's a really cool piece of Hollywood trivia. So Skip Muck swam across the Niagara River before he shipped out. The Niagara River is in upstate New York, borders New York and Canada, and it's a very strong current. It leads to Niagara Falls. So it's dangerous because if you swim across it and you don't make it, you go with it because you get too tired, you can go over the falls and you die. So but he wanted to prove his strength and show up to his girlfriend and swim across the Niagara River. So he, this is all true, so he was going to swim across the Niagara River. His buddies were worried about it. They said, that's dumb. At the very least, let's have one guy in a rowboat next to you, so if you get too tired, you can grab a boat, and you won't die, and we'll make it safe for you. So fine. So they put, one of, one of his friends got in a boat and paddled alongside him. And the, the guy who got the boat, his name was Fritz Nyland. Not probably not a name you've heard of, Fritz Nyland, who went and ended up serving in the war. And Fritz Nyland served in the war, and a bunch of his brothers served in the war too. And they all died, except for Fritz. And then they made a movie about it and changed it to Ryan instead of Nylon. And the movie was Satan Private Ryan. So that in this one moment in upstate New York in 1941 or 43, two men who would later be immortalized in Spielberg movies were together in a river just showing off like kids before going off and doing one of the most difficult and greatest things ever done by the free world. And all, both from Tornal to New York, just tiny little town. And they later put a monument on that part of the river where they shipped off. They put a monument to those two men. And then sort of it's a memorial to all veterans, but they specifically call out those two guys. Because what, what were the odds that you would end up with? The Ryan who lived and Skip Muck being best friends, 
And Band of Brothers was originally 13 episodes. But they panicked. They thought they were going to lose money. They got nervous, so they didn't shoot three of them. In one of the episodes, Skip and Fritz were into each other in a bar in Paris. But all that got, none of that got shot. But I know. I mean, in hindsight, they would have done it because it ended up being the most successful miniseries of all time. But at the time, miniseries didn't exist. You don't think about that now because they're limited series all the time. But when Band of Brothers came out, they weren't doing that. That was not a thing anybody was doing. So it was a big, big roll of the dice for HBO. A lot of money being spent. Turned out to be a good investment. But I love that piece of trivia that those two guys did that thing and then later Hollywood picked up their stories and immortalized them. And that's just a really cool, you know, they lost a lot, but at least they got, we remember them now. And they represent so many people that we lost. So it's really cool that, you know, I admire that Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg put their energy to keeping those stories alive. You know, there's Private Ryan, Bender Brothers, The Pacific, now they're doing Masters of the Air, which is about the Air Force at the time. So they keep keep reminding us that the little old men who walk down the street in in army gear at Veterans Day and Memorial Day aren't just cute little old men. They were once seventeen year old boys with their lives in front of them and a bunch of friends and they all went over to Europe or came over to Europe or came to a different country from Europe and put their lives on the line and lost their friends and changed their lives for the worse so that we could live for the better. It's really an inspiring generation of people. So, thank you for your question, because I love telling those stories. Appreciate it. Thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, as you can tell, I can talk about Band of Brothers a lot. There's a lot going on there. Yeah. So, a little bit more. Sure. Yesterday, I came up to you at the autograph, and I played you um, a voice message from my husband. Right, right, right. Who's in the Navy, and he's such a huge fan of Bennett Brothers. And I, he asked him, how was it? How was it? Did, how, what did he say when, when you asked him about Bennett Brothers? And I told him, and my husband's British, so I never know if he gets really excited or not. So. Fair. <laughs> but after I told him the story, he said, wait, tell it again. And then I, I knew that it was really important to him to listen to you talk about Bennett Brothers. And my question is, is there a message for you to all the troops all over the world that are being inspired by Ben Brothers and anything you'd like to tell them as Mark or as yourself? Yeah, well, I won't speak for Mark because Mark, Mark, Mark did the speaking in the 40s. Um, but I'll tell, doing Ben Brothers was a great education for me, not just as an actor. The acting was the least of it. It was, it changed my perception of myself as a, as a person, as an American, as a man, as a member of, you know, Western society, um, and as a patriot for my nation and all nations that are in the allied, allied countries. Um, I just, I was mesmerized by how hard that experience had to be and how, it, how hard that experience has to continue to be. I am a, anybody who spent any time in conventions knows that I'm a massive supporter of the military. Um, I feel like 1% of the people take 100% of the bullets for us so that we can stand here and do this, so we can go and live our lives. Um, and I feel like that is lost on, I know it's lost, because it was lost on me until it wasn't. I wasn't born understanding it. I didn't grow up understanding it. I came to understand it as a grown man when I was put into a project that forced me to learn about it. And that's why I'm glad those projects exist, because I hope when somebody watches Band of Brothers or Private Ryan or any, you know, uh, uh, Dunkirk, I mean, any, any war experience movie that's telling it as honestly as possible, I hope they recognize the brutality of it. Don't get so lost in the cinematography that you forget that that blow-up scene took a kid's arm off. Don't get lost in the fact that this is not Hollywood make glamorizing something, it's the opposite. The opening 20 minutes of Saving Private Ryan should be required viewing for teenagers. They should all have to watch that because that's what it was like to have the Higgins boats drop that steel on the French coast and be fired at. When you've never really fired at a person before, you've just been training and rehearsing and now they say, you know, you don't even get a chance to pull the, pull the trigger because you get shot. And your buddy, you know, Babe Heffron looked at me 
like I was getting well, up because I looked like him at the time. I had I was you know I was dressed like him. I had the haircut and everything. And they would they would see you and they would start to cry. They get really emotional because the last time they saw you, you were alive, and now you're dead, and you're somebody pretending to be that person. But that that gets lost in their emotions, and they see you. I remember Babe Hefron looking at me and he said, "We tried to find something of you to send home. There was nothing. You were vaporized." And he was really emotional as he told me that. Um, and it was an emotional to be that person and represent that. And go, it's okay, man. Like, my job was to absolve him of his guilt. But he didn't do anything wrong. He was a kid fighting in a war. And if you go left and not right, you get shot. You step on something. You blow up. You know, it's that, it's that kind of experience. Your husband knows. You know, you know. You live with it. So, what I hope is that we as a culture can understand that whether we want to, whether we appreciate or support or agree with the mission, is separate for whether we appreciate or support the women and men who do it. Because the women and men who do it are serving a greater cause. We can get into the nuances of where countries should be, what countries should be doing, and what they should be doing, and how they should be doing it. But the individuals who step out of their lives to get in between bad and good for us deserve our respect. And let me say that I don't care what those people do with their time, with their lives, with their heart, with their mind, who they love, how they look, which bathroom they use, none of it matters. These are brave individuals willing to do something that most of us are not, that most of us do not have the stones or strength to do. So if you have the, the passion and the patriotism that drives you to become a member of the military, and somebody questions your legitimacy or your loyalty based on the fact that you like open-toed shoes or whatever the hell it is, they are the ones with the problem, not you. You are a person of passion and you are a person driven by something deep inside you and know that you are better than those who judge you for who you are. Because it matters tremendously to me that people can separate the difference. If you don't want to make out with a dude, don't do it. No one's making you. But leave everybody else the fuck alone so they can do what they want to do, live the lives they want to live, and do for us what they're doing, which is getting paid no money and putting their lives on the line. You want to question that? You're a nut. And you're also an asshole. So, I... I say to your husband and to you, and to anybody else who has served in the military, anybody else who has family who has served in the military, and anybody who's thinking about serving in the military, something very simple, very easy, but very sincere. I say to you, as sincerely as I'm standing here, as sincerely as I am a grown man with children, I say to you, thank you. And that's all I have for No criticism, no questions, just my gratitude. I appreciate it. And I appreciate your husband. Thank you for watching. Absolutely. Thank you. And that was it. That was all we have time for. Listen, thank you for the time. I know like we uh, we got to have an award there, but I really mean what I say. We are we are as a culture represented by many, 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 many people. One of the things I like about supernatural conventions is we all come from different walks of life. We gather together to enjoy something that bonds us together. And it doesn't matter the path that brought us here. And it doesn't matter who we are when we're celebrating it. We are one people with one passion. And that applies to so many things in life. Remember that and spread that. Thank you, everybody.